Good evening, friends. It's Alexor again with yet another build. And this time with the Infernal Lock. Right? The Infernal Warlock. Now, this is pretty much an existing build, just changed up a little bit. Like, this is not an entirely new Warlock shenanigans. It's pretty much the same as the Wheel of Torment build. But with a, a nice side dish of fire damage. We are, also, you can see we have the Infernal Shade over here instead of other spells. So what we do is we cast our Fissure. And then we go into Profane Veil. Okay, they died before I could even show it. Profane Veil, as you can tell, is fire damage. And it also does auto-apply Infernal Shade to enemies it hits the first time. And the Infernal Shade explodes immediately because we reduce duration a whole lot so let's try this again so you can see they just get wrecked it pretty much immediately i have tested this build at 200 corruption was doing just fine also killed the 200 corruption orobis or shade of orobis rather no problem and the additional thing as you can tell you can also do is what i've been doing here is the classic soul feast so you can do two things, you cast your Fissure and do just Soul Feast, that gives you ward and does damage. Or if there's big mobs like this, then you just do the Profane Veil. Because the Infernal Shade explodes and does AoE damage, so you want to have as many people in there as possible. And as you can tell, they also feared all the time because we have fear on our... Um, Kephonic Fissure, like with the Chaos Bolts, so it's basically the Chaos Bolts Fissure build. See, we shredded these guys super fast, no problem. I think this is actually um, 130 corruption or something. It's not a high one. But as I said, even at 200 corruption, I did just fine. And the Soul Feast is necessary also because we gain mana back this way. On this nah not interested so how does it work let's check the skills by the way this is not a budget build you need a ton of uniques but then you can really go to high corruption again the i have one it's called the torture queen right the torture queen that build is better than this one this one is really only if you want to have some more fire damage if you have fire shenanigans going if you want to have this right as you can tell, it's a lot of uniques. Um, yeah, it's an expensive build. And if you want to have the final damage, then you're going to go with this. If you want to have more damage and have the better build, just by straight damage and survivability, then you go with the Torture Queen. Just so we have this clear. All right. First thing. Soul Feast is pretty much exactly the same as always with just one addition. Usually you go down here more. And you can if you want. But I opted for the Wither. Withering more, because Wither is another... Um, it, it increases damage taken from curses on the enemies. So I kind of like this as a, a nice stack. Also went with this. When Soul Feast hits an enemy cursed with Spirit Plague, Decrepify, Marked for Death, or Penance, it spreads those cursed from that enemy to a number of other enemies within 5 meters. So basically, we give the Marked for Death and Penance. We don't do the other ones. But these are the two we do, and with this we spread it more onto enemies. So that's just great, because more curse means more damage. But you can remove this or this and just go more into the bones of the cursed, or even go into this, which deals more damage. Depending on what you want, really. Uh, you don't even need to max this one out, but I kind of like it because of the mana cost. You can have this on two or three, then you have another one. You kind of want to have the Hellmind. That inflicts damned and the uh, waning life addition and necrotic penetration. It's a nice addition to do more damage over time, which is what we do mostly, right? Infernal Shade is very simple. All you want is actually this. You guys can't see this. This one. Combustion. Infernal Shade expires. There's a large explosion, which is fire damage to nearby enemies. And you have to have this as well. Explosion, explosion critical chance. Because then, like these maxed, okay? This on five one and the, these three you, you gotta have for this build because then you do some real damage 
the explosions are actually insane. Um, we don't need this maxed. Uh, we don't want to have the more damage with this because the duration, that's fine. You want to go with larger area and fire penetration over here. You can also go with more area and more damage. I think this is better than this one. And you have to have three in this for that. So basically, you just want the Inferno Shade to be a shorter duration, but explode. That's what it does, very simple. Confounding Fissure. I actually tried the Fire Warlock build going down this round here, because that's all the Pyro stuff. This all sucks. I tried it. You are still better off damage-wise if you go with this. The Twisted Waves. Torment, that is your curse you put on people when they are in uh, Gaphonic Fissure. Torment deals more damage, but 2% uncapped Necrotic Resistance. Look at our character. 408% Necrotic Resistance. Because we do 2% per... No, we do 3% more damage per 2% uncapped Necrotic Resistance, so that's kind of insane. <clears throat> and this is still the strongest for the fissure. It just is, if you go with the, you have to go with the Wheel of Torment build, kinda, this is still the strongest. I tried going this route and even Ignite Stacks and all the shenanigans, even down here with Vault has Zombies, I tried it. This is still the strongest. Just, just is, that's just what it is. So you put, you go down here, you want to have three in this, you don't have this, need to have this maxed. You want to have Fire Shred and Necrotic Shred, Resistant Shred. You don't need more than three of these spirits because if you put more in this, you'd likely run out of mana all the time because they actually shoot Chaos Bolts, which is what you do here. And 40% chance is absolutely enough. If you want to have more, you can do this. Then you just remove your, your Shred and put three in this. Then you cast more Bolts, but it's going to eat your mana. Okay, so be aware of that. You also want to have this. Torment deals more damage to ignite poison or bleeding enemies. Since we ignite everyone and their mother, this has 30% more damage on your curse. So you can see this build is really mostly a curse torment build with the fire addition. So it's pretty much the same as I said, but um, I like the sort of deviation to fire. Then we have the Profane Veil, and the key thing over here are these two. For our build it is. This just turns it into fire, that's all cool. And this is the Penance Curse I talked about earlier when I was here. This is what's being spread from the Soul Feast over here, okay? If you don't go for the Penance, you can remove this if you don't care about it. Or like, if you don't have this node, the Penance doesn't do that much. What you absolutely need to have is this. Infernal Deliverance. When you first damage an enemy with Profane Veil, you have a chance to cast Infernal Shade, and the chance is 100. <laughs> if you max it out, so it's 100. So 8 shades on them as well, a maximum, and they just all explode, so that's a shit ton of damage. That is your biggest damage dealer still, but of course Profane Veil is on cooldown a lot. If you want to focus more on, you can do this, if you want to wanna focus more on this very combo, Kephonic Fissure, Profane Veil, Infernal Shade combo, you can do this. Then you have to play with this. Stream of Profanity. Directly casting a curse skill reduces profane value's remaining cooldown. But then you have to change things up a little. Because Soul Feast is not a curse itself. You would have, for example, remove the Soul Feast and play some other skill and play this with Bone Curse or with Spirit Plague. These are curses, right? These three. Because then you reduce the cooldown of profane veil so you can make you or like run your combo all the time i've tried this as well a while ago it feels a bit gimmicky honestly i think this one just works better because while the abilities are on cooldown you can just do your soul feast and bring your ward up right because you gain ward from soul feasting on the enemies so i like this better but you can do it if you want okay that's up to you then the chaos wards are pretty simple again these are all the cast by the cafonic fissure you don't even have these on your bar because you don't need it um, very simple, you want to have these max, these three. Maximum damn chance, maximum ignite chance, and maximum hit damage on ignite and damned. These are the ones you want for sure. And you want to have this. Because fear is really an underrated mechanic in this game. When an enemy is feared, he's running away from you for, to, for at least like two seconds, I believe. How, how much is it? Uh, no, it's one second. Okay, never mind. Um... At that time, they are not attacking you. So this is a completely a complete damage negation. 
And it even works on some bosses. Like not the big bosses, but on the, the smaller ones you encounter in your echoes, right? So, or even it works even on um, Kremoros or Jura in the dungeons, funnily enough. They can be filled. So you want to have this. You don't need it max, 75% usually is enough, but um, very powerful. Hit damage to curses, also important. And since we're running Exanginous, uh, dot damage per missing health is what you want. This is not a full life build, this is a low life build. That's about the skills. Passives. I actually went, I mean, this is the base Acolyte sort of thing, right? With Vault Retention and Vitality. Classic, nothing crazy. Many people go for this package, right? You have the Damned Chance, and if you, you get Damned Overload, you get Ignite Overload, and then you get Witchfire, the Witchfire package. And then you get Witchfire Overload or something. Um, so you do Flame Whips, you chain them with your Damned, and you do the Witchfire damage. I don't like that. To me, this always feels underwhelming. I don't know why. It just doesn't feel like it does much damage. And I hate these whips. They just look stupid. Um, so I went instead just the classic spell damage for curses and damage over time and double damage chance per curse and crit multi per curse. And this is more damage per negative aimment on you because you actually will have a lot of negative aimments on you at about five because you give yourself the curse, you give yourself the damned, the ignite, all this stuff. So yeah, this one is debatable. Um, it's fire and ignite chance, 40%. It's not bad, also damned. It's just it's just 50%, it's not crazy. You can also instead go more into the Lich here, into damage over time, and then into the crippling insight. Because this gives you this also scales you nicely, the intelligence scales all your skills. So you can also go with this. I kept it at this one. It felt kind of nice. It's debatable if you want to have this. Everything else is classic. Warlock, as always. Withering Chance, you want to have this. Uh, this one, of course, Int and Vitality, classic. Uh, less damage taken per curse on target. Ward per second. This basically just survivability. Same as this. Ward Decay Threshold and Ward. And this one is... This is the key thing. You want to have this for sure. Actually, you don't need two points in this. I could respect this. You need one. Um... War Decay Threshold per 1% Necro Resistance plus 1. Since we have a lot of Necrotic Resistance, because this is what we build around, you see ourselves sitting at 7000 health consistently, no problem. Okay? It's not just due to this passive, but it's part of it. All right. Um, other than that, the link is just here, Intelligence, Mana Region. Uh, nothing, nothing crazy. So the passives are pretty simple. Again, the, build, uh, the whole build plan is going to be in the description. 40 items. As I said, it's a bunch of uniques. <laughs> it's a pretty expensive build. But what you need for sure... So you definitely need these three, okay? The Wheel of Torment, the Exanctionist, and the Bone Clamor Baboot. But then the build is still a bit lacking. This one files it up a lot, the Ashes of Mortality, because 17% chance on hit to gain 2 war per Ignite, and damned, we do both, right? 9% increased cast speed, which you want to have for your soul feast. Vault retention, fire damage, and chronic damage. So good. You could also run two of them, but they're kind of like this. Because there's water care, fresh out, and necro res. It gives us more necro res and 18 intelligence. 18 intelligence. I don't care about anything else. Armor, cool. Yeah, but health region, fuck that. Who cares? So you can run two of these. That works. You can also run the Immolator's Oblation, which is the belt you get from Kremorus if you have it. That's even better, but it's not unique. I mean, the Wheel of Torment is a classic one, right? Plus two to Echolite spells, 11 intelligence. And the key thing is, when you directly cast Soul Feast, you curse yourself and up to one nearby enemy per 10 intelligence with Torment. So you curse a lot with this weapon. So you need this for sure. Everything else is cool, uh, but not necessary. Exemption is, you know how it works, eats up all your health. And this one, last one key. One vault per second per 3% uncapped necrotic resistance. So there we are again. This also gives us more ward. With this, we actually go up to the 7,000 health here. And together with the last steps of the living, which also give us ward per second. Everything else is just necrotic resistance health. If you have this, it's perfect. Also has necrotic damage, that's cool. Um, health and necro res. Necrotic resistance. Um, 
this has necrotic resistance implicit. That's why I went for it. Otherwise, elemental damage. So you, you really scale with necrotic resistance. That's how your torment deals more damage. And with elemental damage, you do more fire or just fire damage. You do more fire damage, but you scale much better with the necrotic resistance. This is why I said it's actually still just the same build as the torment warlock, but we focus a little bit more on the, the fire with our infernal. If you want to make uh, your infernal shade stronger and deal more damage, then you of course have to focus more on fire damage. But for this, um, it works just fine. This is also a great addition. Um, health converted to ward if you cast a necrotic or elemental spell, which we do both. So this is very nice for us. Uh, strength and cast speed again, also great for the soul feast. So this is a super powerful addition, but it's tough to get. Took me many days to get this fucking item. At least I got it straight away with one LP on it. At least that's something, right? Um, yes, if you don't have them, the build is really a lot worse. Then you just go for Necrotic Resistance on all the items, on all of them. Um, that at least gives you more ward and more damage. So you can run a sort of budget version of it if you just use Exo and uh, You need these three. But outside of these three, you can run a budget version if it's just all in the critical resistance. You can do that, but it's not as strong as this one, obviously. For the idols, again, the same thing as always. Do I even need to mention it? It's your health, your health, your resistances, health, health, resistances, bleed on hit, that's irrelevant, but it's the, the void resistance, health, vitality is health, void resistance, vitality. So basically, you go all health or resistances with your idols. You don't need any crazy damage attacking things. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Again, as I said, it's a very simple build. You put your transplant in your bar, even though you don't uh, have it specialized. Doesn't matter. Sometimes you also want to actually cast the Infernal Shade on enemies directly. You can do this in if there's a huge crowd of like smaller mobs. You just throw it in on them, the Infernal Shade, and it explodes and kills all of them. But usually you do your Cephonic Fissure, and you go into a Profane Veil, right? That's it. And then you can, after that, you usually just keep casting Soul Feast. Dodge out with Transplant and cast the Infernal Shade on enemies whenever you see them. Okay, tell me in the comments what you think of this one. Very simple build. It needs a lot of uniques, though. Again, you can run a sort of budget version, but it's not as strong. And again, it's not the strongest one. The Torment Warlock is stronger, but if you want to have some fire fun with it, then you can go with this build. And I will see you in the next video.